At the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence in Bremen, Dr. Elsa Kirschner is working to ensure that the robots of the future will be responsive, ideally by sheer force of thought. This is to be achieved with the help of analysis of the human brain. We want to have some implicit interaction so that the system kind of knows just from our behavior, for example, from behavior analysis, what we want to do next. Or even that the system understands from our brain activity uh, whether we want to move or not. We use uh, EEG data and you might be aware that it's very hard to record EEG data and also very hard to analyze EEG data. But we can do that with a very high precision already. However, on the other hand, if we know much better what kind of situation the person is in, uh, we can use other signals, for example, muscle activity or uh, system behavior, for example, or maybe information uh, about where the person is looking at. So we can use all this information to make our analysis more accurate and more appropriate for the um, context of the interaction. These data are implemented in direct practical applications, for example, within rehabilitation. So you can imagine that after stroke, a person is unable to move, for example, one's arm, but uh, that's mainly because of the brain uh, is not working properly anymore. It cannot control the muscles. So we want to bridge this gap. And for that, we use uh, EEG analysis. So we can even with stroke patients, we can understand from the EEG signal when the person or the patient wants to move. Therefore, so-called exoskeletons are used, as they have been available for some time for the therapy of paraplegia. And we use this information to trigger an, an, a yeah, robotic device, which is an exoskeleton, uh, to move the person's arm. And by this, the patient feels as if he or she herself wants to move the arm and is just able to do it again. So and that's very important for rehabilitation purposes. The model developed at DFKI will be used specifically for patients who have suffered a stroke. For motor rehabilitation, it's important to connect the brain with the muscles again. And for that, we use on the one hand, as I just said, uh, brain activity. But we also look for uh, some activity that's left in the muscles. So, and we use this exoskeleton uh, and the brain activity, for example, to trigger movements. But we can also use uh, muscle activity. So you can imagine that um, a patient that is able to control an exoskeleton just by thought might not be that much involved in actually performing the action. So we combine it with muscle activity to see, aha, the patient really wants to move and really tries to move hard. It's much more involved in the interaction. And only then the exoskeleton supports the patient. So there's a combination of brain activity and muscle activity is very relevant. Uh, together, of course, with all the control that's in the exoskeleton itself. Serious games are used during therapy to keep patients motivated. Virtual reality is also expected to help facilitate training with the exoskeleton by providing realistic, controllable environments. Serious games have an important role because you can imagine if you want to support a patient under each condition, for example, at home in the kitchen, you would require a system that recognizes all the objects that the patient needs and also needs to understand what behavior the person is, wants to perform and to support it, right? So, and that's very, it's a very tough job. So this is really like a tough job for autonomous robots and we're working on that. So in between, we also want to enable the person to train in an environment that's close to um, their home environment, for example, in the kitchen, but we have a very controlled condition on the one hand so that we are um, very easy uh, know what the patient wants to do and we can easily support the patient. But on the other hand, uh, also with the serious gaming, it's, it's also fun for the patients. So we also motivate the patients to do the, the therapy, to be in content with other patients, for example. And, um, and that also helps uh, the patient to stay motivated. And that's very important for us as well.